So, Shannon, scale 1 to 10, how much trouble are the Lakers in right now? Oh, I'm going to say it's a 5. You know, Skip, momentum is like weather, and it can change rather quickly. We've all been somewhere, if you lived in the, the southeast, it's a nice day and a thunderstorm will pop up. If you live somewhere where there's altitude, you'll be a nice day, and all of a sudden a snowstorm pops up. And considering, you know, how prepared you are for those, they can be very, very bad for you. This could be very bad for the Lakers because the thing is with Anthony Davis, and maybe, Skip, the groin was bothering him from the beginning because he wasn't as aggressive in the 20 minutes, you know, first half 20 minutes as he was in games three and games four. So you kind of noticed something was going on. Now, I, I felt the knee was bothering, and I just think the thing was uh, in game three, he had so much adrenaline going. It was going really well for him, and he just played through it. But you can tell when he came down on that knee skip at the end of the first half, it buckled pretty good. And I was really surprised. I was, too. That he actually stayed into the ball game. Well, I thought it was the knee again. Right, right, yeah. right. But when he, he went up and missed the layup, and I was like, uh-oh, here we go again. Skip, the Lakers, and I think too many times we see teams, they're at home, and they're relying on the crowd to get them going. And we see this, be it basketball, uh, well, I don't know how much home field it plays in baseball, but you see that in, in hockey. You see that in football, Skip. The, the crowd going to get us going. Well, you need to get yourself going. And I don't think the Lakers came out with the energy that I thought they needed to come out with because this was a hungry ball club. They, know, they knew, and for the mere fact that Chris Paul says, nah, because uh, the coach wanted to hold him out. And he said, nah, coach, give me a chance. And if I look like trash, take me out, but at least give me an opportunity to go. Chris Paul, no, he didn't want to go down 3-1. And let me, if this is going to be our last stand, I want it to be with me in the ball game. Yep. But I just thought the Lakers didn't play with the energy and the aggressiveness that they needed. AD had, like I said, six points, two from nine, 0 for three, from three, four rebounds in 20 minutes. Skip, the Lakers need to come to the realization. Statistics bear it out. They're not a good three-point shooting team. They're one of the few teams that play conventional. They play with a center that does not shoot threes. They play with a four. They play with a three and LeBron. They are a big frontline shooting team. They can't play like some of these smaller teams because that's not how they're built. Skip, you can't get up. You can't shoot 43s when you're 24th, 25th in three-point percentage. That doesn't work. You're not going to win very many games. In the month of May, they've had two guys make more than four threes in a game. One in the past 14 games. And you get up 40 threes? Yep. Why? Mm. Uh, Dame Lillard, Steph Curry, some of these other volume three-point shooters, okay, I get that. Yep. But they don't have that on the Lakers. You got to play inside out. You got to play, make them double. And for whatever reason, they just want to come down and jack up threes. They turn the ball over far too many times, Skip, in the third quarter. Seven turnovers, seven missed threes. And what concerned me all year long, Skip, and I kept telling you, I said, Skip, they go long periods of time. They go three, four, five, seven minutes and not score the basketball. I mean, they only gave up 27 points, but when you score 15, now you put yourself in a bind. Mm. And that's what happened yesterday. So now where did they go for scoring outside of LeBron? LeBron was trying to pick his spots like, okay, I'm going to have some here. AD, you take it there. Now with no AD and no guaranteed another 20-point score because we saw Schroeder play really well in game three and pull an MIA in game four. Kuzma, I kept telling you, Skip, it's not that, Skip, he's a, he's a good player, but he lacks basketball IQ. He comes in the game and immediately what he does, he follows a three-point shooter. He doesn't have a, the nuanced understanding of the intricacies of playing the game of basketball. Yeah, obviously he's talented. He's in the NBA. He was a first-round draft pick. But the nuance, the little stuff, that you would expect a player that wants to evolve and get better and better to understand, he doesn't have that. They're going to have to take care of the basketball, and somehow they're going to have to find someone that can give them 20-plus points to go along with LeBron. And LeBron knows now those big shoulders that he talked about so much, they got to carry it. They got to be Atlas. He's going to have to carry the Lakers' world over the next three games. Mm. So... In your opening soliloquy, you barely mention LeBron James until your final thought. Yes. So now back to Jenny's question, scale of 1 to 10, how much trouble are your Lakers in? I'm going to go low on this. I'm going to go all the way down to 2. You're right in the middle at a I'm in, 5. I'm going to 5, yeah. I'm going to go little to no trouble because every day I have to sit over here 
every, every, every day. Will happen. And get barraged <laughs> with best player on the planet. Yeah. And goat James, goat James, goat James. H how many times have you said goat James on this show? If I've said it five, I've said it five thousand. It it might be <laughs> fifty five thousand over the five years yes. that we have been on air yep. here on Fox Sports One. Okay. So given that barrage, that fusillade of goat James that I get over here, yeah. I, I got to set this bar way up here because we are talking about the goat mm -hmm. and the man that you still proclaim best player on the planet. Right. Although when I got finished watching the Nets yesterday, I started thinking, man, that KD guy, he looks pretty best player on the planet to me, doesn't yeah. he? Well, if, do you see the other two guys that were playing alongside him? They okay. didn't look too shabby. But, but he was clearly the best of those yeah. three yesterday. We're going to talk about Kyrie in just a minute here. Okay, given that stature, given that elevation, given that Mount Everest, Mount Olympus that Goat James is on, according to LaShannon Sharp, shouldn't he just take over game five by himself? Shouldn't he just come out and say, okay, that's enough. I got this. I got all of you. These shoulders were built this wide for this reason, for this night, this game, this time. So, in other words, you're saying go, and go game six Celtics in the garden. Wh whichever one of those you want to go. You can go game seven against my Spurs in 2013. Th that, was, that was pretty special. Yes. But there have been three or four of those in yeah. his career where mm -hmm. you said, oh, that was a game. Right. That was a goatish game, actually. Games five and six against Golden State in the 3-1 comeback. You could come do back. that. You could do those. But this is huge for this year's Lakers because you, you have to say it's starting to feel a little do or die-ish, right? Yeah, yeah. Because of AD's status that we don't really know. They did, according to Woj, say after the game that he's day-to-day. -day. Well, do you think he's going to play Tuesday night? No. I would not even attempt to play and him they Tuesday they have night. the shorter turnaround than the Clippers. At least Luke has got until Wednesday night, and right. that's a crucial extra 24 hours. Correct. We You're, saw it with Chris Paul. You saw it with Chris Paul. It helped a lot. And I'll get to Chris Paul in just a mm -hmm. moment. But do we expect AD to play? I, I, I have do, no idea, but I'm, I'm going to guess not. not. No. I'm going to guess not. Mm -mm. What do I call him? AD always dinged. He's <laughs> always dinged. It's always some this or that or this or that. And it's always different. It's always a different injury. It could be a shoulder. could be an elbow. could be a knee. could be an Achilles. could be a calf. could be a groin. Yeah. And now it's the groin. Mm -hmm. What did we see happen LeBron's first year in L.A. with the groin pull? Whew, yeah. It, it wrecked his year, yep. right? Yep. Kept him out about five weeks. Missed 20-something. Okay. 18, so could, could AD come back in 48 hours no. as opposed to five weeks? No. I doubt it. Could he be gone for the rest of the playoffs? Well, now that's a tall order. Rest of playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the thing is, Skip, can they win this series without AD? Yes. Can they go any further? I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. So I believe that LeBron James owes his team a an epic game five, a, a gym of the career type game five mm -hmm. back in Phoenix, because I still believe he is capable and they are capable around him of winning this game. But he's going to have to play much bigger and much more aggressively than he has so far. So let's look at his four games, cumulative four games against Phoenix so far. The first bad thing that I, I hit is he's 32% from three. Well, you said their whole team's not a very good three-point mm -hmm. shooting team. Well, he's jacked up 28, so he's nine of 28. Right. You, you, you got to cut that down. You got to forget about that because I do not think that's your forte. From the free throw line, he is 10 of 17 in these four games. That's 59%. That's pretty pathetic. But this is even worse for Goat James. And I'm putting quotes around Goat. In the four games, he has attempted only four a game. It's 4.3 right. a game. His career playoff average is nine a game. Nine free throws a game, and he's at 4.3. Too much on the perimeter. Okay, too much perimeter. Too many jacked up threes. Nine of 28, 32% right. from three. Not enough attacking the basket. Correct. I'm going to say it again. He is still the best passer in basketball, and he is still the greatest driver of the basketball I've ever seen because he looks bigger than ever. He is 6'9". What are we going to give him? We, do we want to go to 270, 260? I give 260. 
Okay, 265. Let's meet in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So LeBron is 6'9", 265 pounds, and trust me, Jay Crowder can't keep him from the rim. There's nobody. Mikhail Bridges can't keep him from the rim. I don't think DeAndre Ayton can keep LeBron from the rim because he's a little light in the pocket, mm -hmm. as they say. He's still a little skinny for a seven-foot big man. So LeBron has to go into all-out attack mode from the start. And here's the point. He, he has to trust himself enough that even if he makes only 59% of his free throws, if he could get there 20 times, right. that would that that could tilt the game right. in the Lakers' favor. Right. That's because you're going to get points. you're, you're going to get Crowder and maybe Aiton in foul trouble. He's not threatening anybody with foul trouble right. at four attempts a game, no. right? No. So that's not good enough. So he made four out of seven yesterday, and and the one time he went to the free throw line and brick two of them. Right. But but that's okay if if you just increase your opportunities. Correct. He has not done that, and it's been shocking to me. So so now he goes into a game, and the Suns are four-and-a-half-point favorites all of a sudden. So it's flipped wildly right. back and forth. So the odds makers are saying, eh, we don't think AD's going to play. No. So it's all LeBron all the time. Now I'm going to get to your point. You said they're – they're traditional in that they don't have a center who can shoot threes. Right. Well, wait a second. Uh, what do I see on my box score here? Wait, wait, who's this guy, Mark Gasol? No, no, I'm, say, I'm saying they start. Gasol oh, can shoot, okay. but they start, they start drumming, then they go AD and LeBron. So that's a big team. Guess who played more than Big Penguin yesterday? Gasol. Mark Gasol. Guess who played zero minutes in the fourth quarter? Big Penguin. Or as I call him, Kareem Abdul Drummond. But see here. So they just said no. And by the way, Gasol made. Three out of five threes, that, that'll work. Skip, he gives you that. But the problem is, is that they put him in the high pick and roll. And because he's slow, so slow footed, guess what happens? Either Booker or Chris Paul is four mm. foot from the basket or DeAndre Ayton is dunking the ball okay. on somebody's head. Okay. So you can go smaller if you feel like it. Right. The way the Clippers, Clippers were small, they did. They just said, nope, we don't care. You can put big Marjanovic of yeah. Boban in there. <laughs> but, you, yeah. know, you can put him in, and we're still going to try to stay small for a while. Because right? you know why, Skip? He said because Ty Lu said, well, they don't, they don't pour – Post Brazingas. Yep. Brazingas is seven three point guard. He wants to play on the perimeter. So why are we playing Zubots? So they put him in the pick and roll. Well, if they're not gonna post Drummond, or if you're not gonna post Mark Gasol, what's the advantages of playing him? But you gotta play a big because Aiton is seven foot tall, two seventy. He is seven feet tall, and he wrecked you yesterday with seventeen rebounds. Just like game one. Remember game one? He was yep. twenty one and sixteen. Yesterday he was what? Seventeen? What? No, he was fourteen and seventeen. Mm -hmm. Yep, fourteen and seventeen. So LeBron in game one, that's the shameful game. That's the one that puts you behind the eight ball to me. Because right. in the fourth quarter, LeBron went one of four from three and one of four from the free throw line. Right. Mm -hmm. That won't work. And slowly but surely, even without much of Chris Paul in game one, they managed to hold off the Lakers. So yesterday, LeBron played pretty well in the fourth quarter until a flashpoint that occurred Fairly late in the game. It was 123 left, and they still had a chance. Mm -hmm. And if we could see this play, Schroeder drives, and LeBron thought he got fouled and didn't get a call. And there's a little push by LeBron, and, and he pouts the referee. He winds the referee, and neither he nor Schroeder get back. And the ball swings to, guess who? Jay Crowder. And of all the players who he, he's afraid of LeBron James. Right. LeBron's clowning him in, in game three, right, that we talked about last Friday. And what happened? The ball swings to Crowder, and right. he makes the dagger shot? Well, it was a lot of – Skip, we saw a lot of that. We saw LeBron get a dunk yesterday, and everybody's celebrating. And him, Mike, Mikael Bridges is in the corner, shoots a three. We saw uh, uh, Kuzma lay the ball up, and he lay, he sprawled out there like he won the Academy Award, and they <laughs> laid the ball up on the other end. Yep. Let us celebrate that. Let the people in the arena, let the people at home celebrate you. Get your butt back in on defense, Skip, because they're telling you, Make or miss, let's push it. They know you like to play slow. You're not an up-tempo team. LeBron loves to control the pace. So every chance any team gets against the Lakers, what do they do? They push it because they know they're a big team. They're a slow team. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to make or miss. You're going to have to get back, Lakers. But these turnovers, Skip, they had 15 turnovers yesterday. Uh, Caruso and LeBron had 10 of the 15. They did. Seven of them came in the third quarter. When you go 0 for 7 from the three-point line yep. and seven turnovers, you're going to lose more times than not. 
because Chris Paul was in complete control yesterday. He yep. had nine assists with zero turnovers. Yep. By the way, LeBron had six to Caruso's four. Right. Okay. So that brings us to Chris Paul. I was a little surprised <clears throat> that he brought up in the on the floor post game TV interview that his coach, Monty Williams, wanted to sit him for the game. He wanted it known immediately, publicly, that his coach said no and he said no to his coach. Right. Well, how do you get away with that? Was he trying to say, I have the final say here? It was a little surprising that he brought it up because I have nothing but the utmost respect for the coach of the year, Monty Williams. Skip, remember I said I thought they should not play Chris Paul on Thursday did. and save him for Sunday. That's okay. what I was thinking. All right. Well, apparently his coach was going <laughs> to save him for Tuesday. Tuesday. Right. He was like, right? he was doing it the opposite. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why Chris brought that up either because it, it makes the like, Coach wanted to bench me, but I was like, nah, I'm playing. And it put Monty, Monty in a in tough a bad spot situation. After yeah, it does. When, when he had to answer and he said, uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't want to play him, but he said, give me a shot right. and see if I can go. Right. And he looked okay from the start, but not great until the second half. Right. What was the halftime? They were up four at halftime. Half four. And then here he came in the second half, Chris Paul playing with quote unquote one arm suddenly looked like Chris Paul yeah, again. It, he looked that like mid -range that looked guy. Good. He did. It, and he was deadly from mid-range. Right. And it's it's a weird, like, elbow free throw line right. shot. And, and he's lethal with it. And did he not look like himself? So he proved his coach very, very wrong in the second half. And I want to say, on epic games for Chris Paul, and he's had a lot of struggles mm -hmm. in the postseason. Mm -hmm. He still has no ring, obviously. That was as good as it got in the second half at LeBron James, and obviously they've never played each right. other in a mm -hmm. playoff series. Right. He rose and shone, and he was, to me, the best player on the floor in the second half with, quote-unquote, one arm that looked like it was pretty much back. Well, the thing is, Skip, obviously Chris Paul is a great mid-range uh, uh, shooter, and he's okay from three, but yesterday he was 0 for three, so you might need to push him out and try to keep him away yep. from that perimeter. Uh, you can't take chances because, you know, sometimes, you know, guys be lulling you to sleep, yep. and you be reading the injury report like, man, he looked terrible Thursday night, and maybe they played into that, Skip. They're like, well, man, Chris can't be able to do this. But you see, he was getting to that spot about 8 to 10 feet from the basket, and he was elevating, put a couple in over Drummond, got past Schroeder. So he, he, he was healthy. Let's see how he feels after one day in between yep. as opposed to two days in between. But, Skip, when you're shooting 27% from the three, you might need to try a new avenue. 27% is not good. No. I, don't care, I don't care if you're shooting 73s yep. in a series or you're only shooting 10. If you shoot that sorry of a percentage, that's not good. And considering the amount of threes that you're jacking up, bro, you're going to have to, LeBron is going to have to give you a Herculean effort. He will. I don't skip, and I don't know if he can just give you, the problem is, is that when he goes out, Skip, remember that 11 point lead. And then he goes out and woof, it's gone. It, it, he was plus. He played 30, almost 38 minutes, and he was plus. Yep. Dan Caruso were the only one. Caruso and Gasol was the only one that was plus. Everybody else minus 8, minus 9, minus 15, minus 8, minus 13. Yep. So that's been the problem on LeBron teams. When he leaves the court, can they maintain the lead if they have the lead, or can they keep it close if they're behind? Mm. And for whatever reason, they haven't been able to do that on a consistent basis. They're going to have to play the supporting cast. I'm not concerned about LeBron. But the supporting cast is going to have to play one of their better games, minus their second best player in AD. Okay. I believe that your team should win game five and will win game five. But to do so, LeBron's going to have to be 2015 LeBron. He's going to have to be that guy in games one, two, and three right. against Golden State when he was completely shorthanded. Well, Skip, you do, you do realize he took like 34, 35, 36 shots. It's the best I've ever seen him play, and he's going to have to approximate that right. because you know and I know it's going to be crazy at Phoenix tomorrow night, yes. but they still he, – he has still played almost 40 more playoff games than the entire Phoenix roster. Right. So Chris has played a lot of playoff games, Correct. but nothing like LeBron right. has played. Crowd so has been in a few. He's been in a few, but but it's, it's LeBron. It, it, it just – dwarfs them in right. playoff experience and stature. So now he's got to rise and he's got to shine. He's got to be that guy you keep telling me he is. So if you're Frank Vogel, how do you start with no AD? Do you start Gasol 
and not play Drummond because you got to go with a big to deal with Aiton. Because if you don't, Aiton will have 30 points and 20 rebounds. Or he might have 20 points and 30 rebounds. So you got to have a big to battle him. Okay. But or do you start Gasol? Speaking of playoff experience, yeah. I would start Gasol. Okay. It, it just feels better. It looks better. Drummond hasn't been playing much in fourth quarters anyway. Just flip it around and, and go first quarter and see if you can establish a lead that you could hang on to. Well, Gasol's going to have to make the three because unless he makes the three, Aiton is not going to come up from under the basket. Well, so you got to have to make him pay so LeBron can have a lane because if you don't make him if you don't make him pay he's going to be able be there to challenge LeBron at the rim. Yeah, I don't think Gasol is half of what he used to be no, when no, he was defensive not. player of the year. Right. But I do think he's better than Drummond and I think he'd give him a better chance just on savvy and experience and feel than Drummond will. Well, well, I can't uh, there's one guy KK I can't count on him. He I, I don't know what to say about him. Mm. Mm. Okay. And you don't have KC3 nope. at this point. That, Maybe that, he'll bounce back. Well, Skip, that's what, that hurt us a lot, too, because he was doing a great job he was. on book because he was. he was forcing him to be less efficient. I agree. That's what hurt him also, Skip. They got into foul trouble early. Not really foul trouble, but it slowed the game. They get the lead, and here come book right back. And know, but he still fouls. hasn't hurt you. He's 5 of 14 and 1 of 5 from 3. Yeah. He's a poor three-point shooter. He, he can't shoot you out of the gym. No. Nope. Well, Shannon, you know, they did visit your restaurant over the weekend. I know it's, no, they didn't. It's a busy that was closed. weekend. It's a you busy closed weekend. You closed from a holiday weekend? weekend? It's not really? how it works. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed. Or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.